Joan, but I, the first All time right. I went into... I'm going to have oh. to interrupt Howard Stern right, here. He's on the radio right now. We're, yes. on, we're on his radio, but we're also here. Uh, we're back. It's half past the hour. I'm at uh, K-Rock WX. RK in New York City, where Howard Stern uh, does his radio program all the time. But I saw his movie, Private Parts, Saturday night. Oh, I so heard you everybody in the theater cheered when he came on. So I heard you really liked the film. Yeah, it was really good. You're, you're, you're good. Thanks, thanks. No, the, you know, this is probably the most exciting time in my life. Is I it? Can, yeah, it really is. I mean, we have the number one uh, soundtrack in America, yep. the number and one number radio, radio show, and now a number one movie. And you had a number one book. I mean, the whole, the whole ball of wax. Yeah. He is the this, king what's of all media. What are, you, what are you doing with all this money? Uh, it's, I, I haven't seen any money, and I'm going to tell you something. I mean, I, have, I really haven't, I haven't seen any money from the movie or anything. It doesn't happen like that. They don't, like, pay you. Like, you yeah, get, did you get a big check yeah, over the weekend? I didn't weekend. get a big check over the weekend. So, uh, but you're going to. What's really exciting about it yeah. is that, um, you know, four years ago I wrote the book. And, of course, I never imagined that it would be made into a movie. And now, finally, people, this is the first weekend that they, they've seen it in the theaters. And, of course, we had, a lot, we had a lot of audience go who listens to the radio show and stuff like that. But Saturday night, we saw that a lot of people around the rest of the country started going. So word is getting out there that this is a really funny film. And the best thing for me was I was coming on, uh, I went on a plane coming home from Los Angeles, and two stewardesses came up to me and said, we were dragged to the film by uh, our boyfriends, and we saw the film, and we and loved they liked it, it, and they loved it. Well, it really chronicles uh, Howard's life uh, and that journey of his, but it also shows that he's kind of this nice guy with this big act, and we'll be talking to him about that coming up. Charlie? Mm. I tried to get Joan to do the uh, program in dark glasses, but she wouldn't do it. Also, I had money editor Tyler Matheson will be here to show you how you can buy stocks without having to pay uh, a broker. radio thing, but yes. boy, the movie thing was big box office over the weekend. Number one at the box office, Howard's Private Parts. We'll be talking in just a moment after this. Back. We are back. Oh, we are back. Good morning, America. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about we work out at the gym together, Howard Stern. Yeah, we um, certainly do. And he was uh, discussing my leotard. Anyway. <laughs> a little more than that. And so <laughs> that's what happens when you're here on the Howard Stern Show, which we are at the same time as being on Good Morning America, because, of course, he had the number one movie this weekend at, uh, at the old movie theater. Did, did you, have you seen it inside a theater yet? Yeah, well, Friday night I went to see it with uh, audiences in Los Angeles. So I'm there and... Always uh, by coastal he goes back. Well, I was. Now. I had done The Tonight Show on Friday night, so I was in the, you know, Friday night. I went, after I did The Tonight Show, I went to movie theaters. And there were people lined up all over the place to see the movie. And you go in, and, and uh, at Man's Chinese Theater, there were like 1,500 people watching the movie together and sitting there and laughing. And, and applauding. And applauding and, and waves of laughter like I hadn't seen before. And were it's you a little embarrassed? Uh, no, I was really pleased. Being in the theater with all? No, no, we were upstairs. We were so upstairs. people couldn't see us, yeah. All right, well, everybody we at home may, may not have seen it yet, so we just want to give them a little, a little taste of it. Okay. So it chronicles his life, but it just goes to show that it wasn't always easy. Watch this. The way it said properly is WNBC. This is key. Come on. WNBC. No, no. Got to be more like this. <clears throat> Listen up. WNBC. You hear that kind of lift? NBC. WNBC. 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 Why Now it may look like you're playing along with the act there, but the real well, truth is you gave you know you gave them a run for their money everywhere you went. It was a struggle. A well, that's a that's a, a a real thing. You know, the movie is what really happened in my yeah. life. And I had come from Washington D.C. I was the number one disc jockey in Washington. And when I got hired in New York, I figured, well, this is it. I'm coming in, the conquering king. Now I've arrived. I'm going to be allowed to do what it is I do on the radio. And I walk into the office the first day, and that guy is sitting there. That's my program director. And suddenly, like an infant, he is teaching me how to say WNBC the proper way. And I go, oh, my God, I'm back to square one. This has nothing to do with what I do. So what, I mean, and, and they really just were on your case. I mean, it was every day you were almost getting fired until finally the ratings came in. Of course, you were at the top of the charts, so they couldn't fire you. But what kept you going? Uh, well, you know, I knew one thing at NBC, that if I, before the ratings come out, they treat you like a dog. Yeah. And ratings in radio come out like every four months or so. So in order to get ratings, I had to do what I do on the radio, but they didn't want me doing it. So somehow the trick is to keep your job until these ratings come out. And this guy was a terror. He was my worst nightmare. And this is why I think audiences like the movie. Every one of us in our career, I don't care if you're a broadcaster, I don't care if you deliver newspapers, 
there's a, a guy called Pig Vomit. That guy's name in the yeah, movie is Pig Vomit. Pig Vomit. I, I nicknamed him that. And there's always a guy who's going to try to stop you from realizing your dream. I don't care what it, I mean, you're a broadcaster and you must have met a million guys like this who are going to sit there and obsess on every stupid thing and miss the big picture. And that's what's so great about it. To me, it's like a Rocky story. Every time you think you're going to win, you get another guy like this who's going to take on a battle. And fortunately uh, for me, I won the battle because if I hadn't, I would have been out of broadcasting. Isn't it nice to just smear it in their faces? Uh, a little bit. This is sort of vindication <laughs> for me. On 60 feet wide, however many feet yeah. tall. Yeah. It's but a wait a second, but you mm -hmm. also talk in the movie about how you, you don't like your looks, you're not handsome, you hate your nose. Right. What was it like to see? And you play yourself. Yes. I mean, not only is this a movie about your life, but you play yourself. Well, when we did the movie, I didn't sit and worry about how I was going to look on screen. You I know didn't? that, uh, no, I'm not a typical, come on. Uh, come on, look at this face. I am not going for uh, the movie star kind of look. I know I don't have that. And I think that's what's refreshing about the picture. We're but there so is a moment, every time he watches the film, there's a couple of profiles where he just, he covers his eyes. <laughs> yeah, I, watch, I, watch this film. I did that a couple you of times. You had a nose job, you know. <laughs> I know I could have a nose job, but I'm afraid it'll affect my voice. You know, I, I don't know if that, you know. Or your career. But wait a second, what about this portrayal? I mean, I don't want to give too much of the movie away, but I I mean, if they've read the book, that they they yeah. know that you, that you're this nice guy doing this act of being the shocker, obnoxious well, guy. And it, what would that possibly hurt your image to let them know that you're really nice? I have never worried about an image. I think my fans know I'm a nice guy. I think people who listen to this radio show know that I'm a nice no, guy. No, most people I know that, that don't know you personally think that you're disgusting. Well, uh, you know what, but that's okay. I think the guy on the radio, but that's okay too. I don't really worry about image. If I worried about image, then... Uh, you wouldn't my, be where you were. I wouldn't be, yeah, because I used to get knocked yeah. so much. In the, I mean, these positive reviews are great, but I used to get knocked so much in the press and, I, and it didn't bother me I didn't care because I knew that I was pleasing the audience who was driving in their car at the worst time of day but let me say something I mean I the guy on the radio and this is what the point of the movie is is me that's what's locked inside my head and I let everything come out I always felt in real life I had to play a game you have to you have to mask all of your feelings you have to be guarded I hate real life I love being on the radio it's much more fun you know, so, I, I mean, this to me is the most uh, exciting thing to have the number one movie. You know why? Because it's a funny movie. I was on the plane coming back from Los Angeles, and I'm watching this movie with John Travolta called Michael. And I'm saying, this is a movie that is horrible. I, I, there, it's supposed to be a comedy. There are no laughs. I can't even follow the story. I, it sounded like a good premise that went wrong. And what I like is that people are leaving the movie theater going, wow, this is a good film. Yeah. You know, and I love that. I mean, I'm sure you, di you didn't know what to expect, and then you ended up no, liking the film. No, I didn't know what to expect, yeah. But right. the audiences there loved it. But does your wife like it when you talk about her, though? Well, and my, your three daughters? Well, that's the, uh, my kids went to see the movie, and they loved it. They yeah? They've seen it twice so far, and uh, their friends like it. And I think the movie does cut across uh, whether you're a woman or a man or a kid or an old person. I think and your people wife? like it. My wife loves the movie. She, uh, Is she still bugging you, though, about talking about her on the air? Yeah, exactly. The, the, and we deal with that in the movie. Uh -huh. The fact that I think the reason that uh, people say the movie's romantic is because, well, here we have this ridiculous relationship. Yeah. Here's the woman who stood by it's my a side. a loving relationship. Yeah, she's a great woman. She stood by my side. Nobody wanted me. Radio stations didn't want me. Women didn't want me. And this woman stands by my side. So you better still be nice to her now that you're a big shot. Yeah, right. So when, as I start to get big on the radio, right, yeah. all of a sudden I'm talking about our sex life. I'm talking about her miscarriage. And she's like, isn't anything private? And we don't resolve it in the movie because we've never resolved it in real life. But yet, I think when you leave the theater, you see why we're still married. Yeah, he includes all those private parts in the movie. Yes. yes. Those are the private parts. Yes, the, absolutely. Uh, those are the private part. parts. Yeah. Those are the most private parts. Now, having I said that now I'm a big movie star, I was wondering if I could ask you out on a date. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Like, here's this movie about how loyal I am, and, and this and that, all of a sudden Is your I'm wife dating. And you're all over town. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, now I'll be all... only kidding, honey. Yes. <laughs> honey, I don't right. want Joan London. Well, he, only, he also doesn't give you the second part of his life in the movie. Obviously, there's going to be a sequel, Private Parts 2, right? Oh, yeah, a lot of people said at the end, couldn't you give us a couple of more scenes where you go home with your wife in like a contemporary situation with your kids and all that? Wait till the next movie, right? I said, hey, we're getting to work on that sequel. <laughs> all right. Nice to be here. It's fun being here. Oh, you don't have to wave to those yeah. guys back No, there. come on. They're part of your act. And Robin, too. Well, yeah. Robin. Thank you, Joe. All right. Well, I have to go back to Charlie now, okay? How You've got to talk money and how to invest your money and make some well, money. Well, Howard should Everybody listen Everybody can't up, be a big movie he's, star. He's yes. making so much. Yeah, I, you're listening. You're making a lot of movies, so listen <laughs> right Charlie, now. Charlie, here's a frightening thought. I'm the new face of Hollywood. I've got the number one movie in America. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Charlie. Did he just call the mornings the worst part of the day? Not so. Not oh. so. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Howard. Thank you, uh, Joan. We're, next, we're going to turn to our money editor, Tyler Matheson, how to put your money in the stock market.